Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, I'm going to explain how you can find the force between wires using magnetic fields. So let's say I have wire A and wire B. I'll say they have the same current, we'll say six amps and six amps. It points in the same direction. And yes, that matters. I'm going to say that they both have the same length. Length A equals length B, which is 10 meters. And I will say that they are separated a distance of 16 centimeters. And again, my question is, what is the force? Let's say, what is the force of wire A on wire B? Now you should know because of Newton's third law that the forces on each other will be equal. And that's because every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. So that means the force of wire A on wire B is the same as the force of wire B on wire A. So it doesn't matter if that's confusing to you. You'll get the same answer. So I do want to find both the magnitude, the number, and the direction. And the direction, you have three answer choices. The direction is either the wires will come closer together, the wires will be spread further apart, or there's no force at all. So the first thing we want to do, if we want to find the force of wire A, on wire B, we are looking at wire B here. That means when I set up my magnetic force equation, which I'll say FB for wire B, it's going to equal the magnetic force equation, not this one, QVB sine theta. I repeat, not this one. You use this one for point charges. This is not a point charge, so you don't use this equation. Instead, we will use the equation force on wire B equals I L B sine theta. And I'm just going to tell you, you can probably ignore the, the sine theta part, almost certainly. And I'll explain why when we get there. So I is the current in wire B. L is the length, again, of wire B. But this is the magnetic field from wire A. And the reason why is because yes, wire B is creating a magnetic field. If you wanted to find the direction, your thumb would point in the direction of current. You'd curl your fingers to see which way the field points. It would point around like this. So in other words, yes, wire B is creating its own magnetic field. However, it cannot give a force on itself for the same reason that you know this logically. If you try and pick yourself up off the ground, like literally imagine you want to take your hands, pick yourself up by the feet and lift yourself up in the air, it doesn't work because you cannot exert forces on yourself like that. Similarly, this wire cannot exert a force on itself. It has to, like someone else has to pick you up in the same way another wire has to cause this wire to move. And that's going to be wire A. Now let me erase these lines on wire B. I'm going to instead draw magnetic field lines on wire A. And actually, I'm going to make them really big so that they're touching wire B, or at least gets close to it, like this. Now, it points in the same direction. In other words, if I think of wire A, I would say the magnetic field, thumb up, curl my fingers around. I'm looking at wire B, which is to the right of my thumb. Looking at my fingers to the right of my thumb, it looks like it points into the page. And so that's the symbol I'm going to draw into the page all along wire B. That is the direction of my magnetic field. And that's going to matter when we get to the right hand rule with magnetic forces, which we'll do later in this problem. But anyways, it looks like the force on wire B is equal to I the current, L the length of B times the magnetic field from A. We know the current already, it's six. The length of the wire is 10. And the magnetic field B, we're going to have to solve for it using the equation B equals mu naught I over two pi R. And this is specifically for wire A, but since all the values are identical, it won't end up mattering that much. So mu naught is a constant 1.26 times 10 to the minus six. This is the current in wire A. So we would say six and then divided by two pi R is the radius, not like the length of the wire, but really the distance away from wire A. In other words, wire B is 16 centimeters away from wire A. I wouldn't write centimeters, I would write 0.16 meters. So that's gonna be the distance in the denominator. I plug this in my calculator. Let's see what number we get. 
looks like I get 7.52 times 10 to the minus 6. This is an extremely small magnetic field, which is why we don't care about it when we do DC circuits. Because technically, whenever you have a current in a wire, you're going to have a magnetic field. Now, most of the time we don't care about it, but for these problems, we obviously do. So that's the magnetic field, which I can plug in right here. 7.52 times 10 to the minus 6. Let's see what that force is. Looks like I get an answer of 4.51 times 10 to the minus 4th. And those units are newtons because we're talking about a force. That is the force of wire A on wire B. Now, what about the direction? We still want to know the direction. So for that, we're going to use a new right-hand rule. I swear there's like so many right-hand rules in this class. But this is the right-hand rule specifically for magnetic force on a wire. So far, we've already talked about right-hand rule for magnetic field and right-hand rule for magnetic force, but on a point charge, this is the right-hand rule for magnetic force on a wire. So here's what we do. Step one, this is not going to be the curl finger method. This is going to be like the physics gang sign method, if that means anything to you. Step one, point your thumb in the direction of your current. Step two, you're going to point your index finger in the direction of your magnetic field and step three you are going to half extend your middle finger and that is going to be the direction of your magnetic force which by the way this is extremely similar to the other three finger point method the other physics gang sign method we did for magnetic point charges however the only thing you would change is instead of current it was the direction of velocity that was the only difference between point charges and a wire current in a wire everything else is the same and since we want to know the direction at point b i'm going to do it for point b so it looks like my thumb points up because my current points up it looks like my index finger points into the page because that's the direction of the magnetic field as you can see by my red circles with the x's in them that's into the page and then half extend your middle finger it looks like the force will be pointing to the left in other words this wire B wants to go towards wire A. So the direction is left, as we just said. And if you were to do the exact same right hand rule, but you have to do everything in reverse. In other words, you need to find the magnetic field from wire B on wire A, which I would just tell you is going to point out of the page if you do it correctly. And that's using the curl finger method, by the way. So try it if you want. Thumb points up for A, index finger points out of the page towards me half extend middle finger that force points to the right it looks like the wires attract and by the way the wires will always attract as long as the currents go in the same direction so in other words the conclusion that I want you to draw is that if you have two wires and you have currents in the same direction then they are going to attract always if you have wires with currents pointing in opposite directions I'm just gonna tell you these will repel always and you can prove that yourself if you'd like and the last thing i want to say is there is a shortcut equation that you can use because what we did was pretty complicated we said the force was equal to i l b oh i never explained the sine theta let me explain that real quick right now so the reason why we don't care about sine theta is because your current points up and your magnetic field points into the page if you look at your hand that formed a 90 degree angle and the sine of 90 is one that's why we don't care about it and you'll probably never care about the sine theta unless they give you an angle specifically. So we said the force was equal to ILB, and we said B was equal to mu naught I over two pi R. So if I wanna plug this in for B and come up with some kind of shortcut equation, here's what I would say. The force, and this is the force between two wires, is equal to mu naught times I1 times I2, the two currents in your wire, times L, the length of the wire you're looking at divided by 2 pi I'm gonna say D it's the distance between the wires so that is the distance between the wires and L is the length of the wire you're looking at specifically because you're not gonna look at both wires at the same time you're only looking at one or the other and like we said before same direction attract opposite directions repel and this is a very nice cheat sheet you can use as you're studying so thank you all for joining me today. My name is Dan the Tutor, and I'll see you in the next video.
Bye-bye.